Uh, yesterday uh, we finally had ended uh, at a point where we said that uh, uh, excessive usage of uh, withdrawal uh, you know, could basically uh, make you realize that the person is not using withdrawal as a defense mechanism rather withdrawal is being used in a maladaptive form. Okay. Uh, today we are going to focus on the same issue. Uh, but from a little different angle in a sense uh, that if I have to find out who are the people who are near and dear to me okay, and are uh, no withdrawal type or they are the ones who tend to avoid things or they seem to be a much more uh, in a compromising fashion. Okay. Basically this is driven by the idea that uh, I feel concerned about somebody okay, who is very close to me and then uh, you also realize that the person concerned uh, shows this type of a tendency. One important thing that has to be understood is uh, that there are personality differences. Okay. The major classification being that uh, you know, uh, one could be introverts, the other person could be an extrovert and there could be a possibility of uh, somebody being an ambivert okay, uh, showing uh, some characteristics of the two. Now, introvert individuals are usually very quiet type individuals. Okay. Uh, therefore, everybody whom you come across and you find that uh, the person concerned happens to be a very quiet and a very retiring type of a person, okay. one should not uh, you know, consider uh, that they are defensively withdrawn. So, this could be a misclassification if you consider that everybody who seems to be very quiet and everybody who seems to be you know a retiring type of an approach who takes in life okay, does not mean that the person concerned is withdrawn in nature rather it could be you know a manifestation of the personality profile of the individual. You, know. you have certain type of personality characteristics which makes you like this and therefore, it need not be defensive withdrawal. Now, because some of the major psychotic symptoms uh, they have that uh, no dominance of the withdrawal behavior pattern, non aggressive and introvert individuals are sometime misclassified as maladjusted. Okay. So, this is basically a word of caution uh, that one should not consider introverts individual, individuals who are otherwise very quiet, individuals who would not be very proactive in terms of you know, approaching you, gelling in the gelling with the involvement okay. that does not mean that they are maladjusted individuals. Okay. Uh, usually uh, in hostel setup for example, uh, say if you have a wing uh, where you have 10, 12 uh, you know, hostel mates staying there in different rooms okay, and you find that uh, you know, 10 of you very uh, you know, would talk loudly, will come out, approach each other's room. Uh, try to interact with each other as much as possible and then you realize that you have somebody in the wing. Okay. He usually you know, will not take the initiative of knocking your door, will not take initiative of asking you that can we go out and have food outside okay. or let us just you know play something or let us enjoy in different different forms. Okay. Rather if you knock his door or her door Okay, then she would be willing to come out to spend time with you, but on her own okay, he or she will not take, uh, take this proactive measure of approaching you and saying that uh, fine let us go ahead and have uh, fun like this. Okay. You would find that there are people like that no? who would otherwise if, you, if, if invited they will very easily go the, uh, and mix with the environment, but they themselves will never, never take initiative. Okay. Such people should not be classified at okay, he seems to be withdrawn right from the day one of the semester he was like that. Okay. There could be you know, this type of a misclassification that should not take place okay. because that shows the personality characteristics of an individual and therefore, it is not an indicator of withdrawal tendency. Okay. Uh, we are not going into the details of it. 
but uh, there are two interesting uh, things in psychology if you are interested read about it and if time permits we will uh, at some time uh, when we would be coming to uh, know uh, how self plays an important role okay at that time we might discuss this issue two important things there is a very interesting personality test called uh, meyer briggs type indicator okay popularly known as mbti okay now mbti is a very interesting type of um, psychological test which is very much used uh, in the corporate sector okay and it is used for multiple things no it is used for uh, identification of uh, the personality profile of the individual you can make out what type of person this concerned person is uh, at the same time it is also used for uh, no picking individuals whom the group thinks of giving some extra responsibility so say for example <coughs> there are uh, institutions where uh, if the ceo has to be selected or if uh, say the some person who has higher stake uh, involved in uh, the position for selection of those people okay they invite the applicants to undergo mbti okay so i know what type of person you are and in certain type of situations how would you react and accordingly i would decide of course besides your performance besides your experience that whether you should be given this job or not okay uh, there is a another uh, interesting uh, you know test in psychology it's uh, called uh, johari's window again popularly used in the corporate sector johari window is a very interesting type of uh, thing uh, which you can very easily uh, use uh, especially for predicting some degree of dynamics in the group what johari window does it uh, does is that it has a list uh, if i remember correctly 56 uh, items are there just words 56 words they are adjectives basically okay what you have to do is uh, that you have to choose those adjectives five to six adjectives that defines you okay according to you you consider that these five or six adjectives they define me then your friends are given the same list and they are told okay that choose five to six adjectives that defines him so say for example if i am the person uh, know for whom this evaluation is being done so i will look at the list of 56 adjectives and tick that these are the adjectives that defines me as an individual the list is given to you and then you tick uh, know on six to five to six adjectives that according to you defines me then you would have another set of five to six adjectives that will say that this is uh, know what uh, no, I think people know about me, but perhaps people do not know it. And the last set would be those adjectives that neither people know about you nor you know about yourself. Okay. So, basically, what happens you have something like a four box plot, okay. you have four boxes. So, how you perceive yourself, how others perceive yourself, what you do not know about yourself, but others know, and what neither you know about yourself nor others know about you. Okay, so, the darker side of you or the unknown side of you, it is a very interesting type of a thing, because it then tells who are the individuals, okay, if they are given a group activity, who are the individuals who would work very smoothly. So, if I have to say if I have 59 students in the course and if I have to give a group task, okay, using that uh, no Johari's window, I can very easily say that find these 5 or 6 people I will put together, because this seems to be a very coherent group based on each other's rating of themselves. Okay. Uh, so, usually what happens that uh, now you when you start looking at individuals, okay, there is a probability uh, that you might not be seen by others the way you perceive yourself. Okay. So, I might find myself that fine uh, no I have too many things to do or I do not find meaning standing in the corridor and talking till late in the night and then claiming that I sleep usually at 2 in the night. The truth might be that although I am awake till 2 o'clock in the night, 
uh, but I study only for <coughs> one hour or two hours rest of the time I waste according to me and according to you I invest with friends okay. and therefore there could be a mismatch in the perception itself. Now I have a reason why not to approach you and invest more and more time with you and you have a reason to misclassify me okay, that why I tend to avoid you. The truth might be that I do not tend to avoid you or in a given situation I do not show uh, no generous withdrawal tendency rather I am you no know, investing my time in something else and therefore such misclassification should not take place. Okay. The personality makeup of the individual has to be given importance okay, that by temperament you are like this, by trait you are like this and hence you are accepted the way you are you cannot be misclassified. Having uh, you know, discussed all this now we would come to the primary causes uh, responsible for withdrawal. Usually it has been uh, realized that prolonged illness, physical handicap and previous uh, experiences of social isolation might predispose a child to avoid activities and situations uh, know where you have social involvement, where you have a competitive type of a scenario. Okay. What happens usually say uh, when you run with the stream you know about others, others know about you and therefore uh, know moving ahead with the group is not difficult at all. So that type of a social scenario where there are set of people uh, who have you know, been together for uh, you know, quite long period of time it is very easy to understand each other to predict each other's behavior to demand certain things from each other to accept each other's viewpoint. But if you are a stranger or say if you have been grafted later on in that situation it is very difficult for you to gel with it okay. and therefore uh, say if you are for some reason if you have not got the chance to stay in that group for long okay, you could show withdrawal tendency when you are put in that type of a situation. I would uh, know uh, state a very interesting story to you I do not know how interesting it might appear now uh, that was the time when uh, I was in class 11th and uh, those were the days when these channels were not available only Doordarshan was uh, available and on Sunday evenings I do not now remember the time but perhaps it used to be 5 or 5.30 in the evening when a movie used to be screened. Okay. So every week on Sunday evenings you would have a movie on the television set. Now I realize that uh, Monday morning the movie screened on Doordarshan last evening happened to be the topic of discussion in the class. So whenever the teacher is missing or the gap that you find between uh, departure and arrival of two teachers okay, or the lunch break. Okay, or in the cycle stand everywhere you know the topic of discussion uniformly happened to be the movie that was screened last evening. Okay. Uh, somehow at that point of time I was not so interested in movies I do not know why okay, because now I find myself very much interested in those days I was not so interested in movies. Uh, but because of this type of a group dynamics okay, I ensure that every evening I would also watch the movie because otherwise you are an isolate in the group. No? Everybody talks about one or the other uh, you know, uh, screenshot and they discuss it okay. and then you find that you are completely lost you do not know what actually happened and it was not only me after few months we realized that everyone was forced to watch the movie simply because this is what was happening in the class. No? somebody would you know trigger a discussion and because it happened last week therefore it has to happen this week because it, ha because it has happened for two weeks therefore it will happen in the third week and it became a ritual. Much later we realized that this was a foolish act on our part okay. but though the entire one year all of us kept on watching movie. Now this is basically you know the I would consider that this is an attempt desperate attempt by members <coughs> of a group. Okay to ensure that they are not left isolated. 
you feel that you are part of the group okay and the group can easily you know uh, uh, accommodate you because you also talk about things which the group is comfortable talking about but imagine a situation if you have experienced a prolonged illness somebody diagnosed with uh, cancer told to undergo chemotherapy and uh, for this reason he or she cannot uh, know come to the class for the entire semester okay forget about the administrative part of it where you have a sanctioned leave you have this option you have that option we are not talking of those options you come to the class for two days then you have a prolonged absence and then suddenly in the month of april once again you come to the class okay you find as if you are lost you take time to gel okay so if one has experienced prolonged illness there could be a problem that you have uh, no you are somewhere uh, you have experienced life in such a way that you tend to appear withdrawn in most of the situations where most of the people will know fly like butterflies and interact with each other similar is the case with uh, no physical handicap imagine no you are a, a very active partner of a group okay involved in all types of group dynamics uh, one evening you decide to go to have tea somewhere or uh, dinner somewhere in the city you meet an accident and finally both your legs are amputated okay we are taking extreme examples right now no and then you never remain what you were okay or you yourself have experienced extreme social isolation because of certain reasons uh, i don't know how far you are aware of uh, this thing that um there was a time uh, in our country um, i think it was 91 92 that was the time uh, when uh, the government had uh, accepted uh, you know uh, adopting the recommendations of the mandal commission for reservation in education and job okay and uh, there was a huge protest everywhere so all academic institutions had you know extreme degree of protest that was seen i happened to be a undergraduate student at that time just you know from my plus 2 to undergraduate days that was the time when all this happened and uh, in my university in the hostel there was a very uh, interesting type of a system i don't know who had thought of it Uh, but at that time also i did not find merit in it today also i don't find merit in it i'm not criticizing those who designed it that way but even at that time when i was a student i didn't find why it should be done like this today when i look back again i don't uh, know respect that type of an arrangement i don't have an appreciation for that the arrangement was what you have a hostel okay and there were uh, no the uh, bathroom area in two or three three different uh, zones okay so say if you have a rectangular type of a building okay on one side you have the main entrance and on the three sides in the center you would have the bathroom areas now these bathroom areas okay had uh, no uh, the basins on the corridor and uh, the commodes and then uh, the bathing area okay uh, multiple of them no now for some reason the university had decided that those who would be admitted into the courses in of the university under the reserved category okay they will be given room next to the bathroom okay so you have the bathroom definitely there would be two rooms on each side one each okay so all these rooms were given to those students who came under this scheme the reason why i had asked my warden why why is this type of an arrangement okay and i was told uh, that uh, this is to you know make their life much more comfortable here because they are very close to uh, you know the facilities that the hostel provides 
but in turn what happened rest all those who were not occupying the rooms and had not come through the this very government scheme okay there was a very clear line of divide okay so if you are in those rooms means you are under the uh, some reserve category if you are not in those rooms then this means you are belong to the general category okay and i still remember that you know invisible line of division did exist okay so unless and until you are academically very bright okay where you would be accepted by the larger group okay otherwise uh, no you you feel isolated in the you no know, lecture halls uh, because people do not consider uh, you no know, you to be uh, friendly with in the hostel you are in a different type of a room where nobody feels going to those rooms and nobody entertains you and you have that hesitation of uh, you no know, knocking your wing mates and talking to them great line of divide now if you one has experienced life like this i'm sure those of you who have some rural connection uh, know will know this uh, that in the rural part of india uh, i would say 15 years from now look 15 years in the reverse direction from now there happen to be very stringent practices primarily designed for those who belong to certain other uh, castes in the society so there would be few privileged castes who would dominate and the uh, mukhiyas not the elected ones right now some system of uh, you know making the mukhiyas okay so these dominant people would become the mukhiya the head of the village they will have their own group four five members again belonging to Uh, the other castes and then there was a long list of uh, people belonging to the what is called as lower caste okay who won't enjoy these privilege okay and different type of uh, you no know, uh, oppressive mechanisms i still remember somebody say if my house is located in this corner of the village okay and if people of the lower caste are supposed to cross the road okay they'll take out their slippers in their hand okay walk barefoot on the road till they cross my fence then they'll put the slipper down wear it and then move on the road this is great degree of humiliation today if you think if you are asked whenever you cross the residence of this man take out the, your slippers you will feel insulted why should i okay the only place where we take pride in removing our shoes is the places of worship okay otherwise we don't take pride in removing our shoes okay even to the extent that uh, i shouldn't say this on record but uh, i would like to mention no uh, that even in uh, uh, at locations where you are supposed to remove your shoes operation theaters for example okay uh that uh, testing labs for example where you have all type of uh, no biological tests uh, taking uh, supplementing your uh, medical report okay you would find that when you arrive as a patient you are supposed to follow the protocol but you would find you know the security staff of the hospital of the lab Uh, the cleaners of the lab uh, hospital they take pride in going with their shoes in the operation theater and coming out they are not concerned about it okay so except for place of worship okay you would realize that we uh, find a system here where you do not follow ideally which you should have followed whereas you deliberately force somebody to uh, you know um, remove the shoes on the private uh, on a public road okay simply because this house belongs to somebody from the upper caste and you cannot move okay with slipper this is insult to me uh, southern part of india had even worse type of mechanism uh, when uh, the people from this brahmin families they used to take bath in the river okay 
and when they used to go back to the temple and back to their home okay anybody from the lower caste should not cross the road at that time no if the sun is on the other side and if the shadow of the person falls on me i become impure so strict was the rule so that would primarily mean uh, that when people from the brahmin community in the, that those southern villages would move on the road nobody else is supposed to move this is far more stringent than the jet plus security movement in our country okay so if somebody experiences this type of social isolation from early days you are bound to remain withdrawn throughout your life you cannot become uh, no very very proactive in your later life simply because you have experienced extreme forms of uh, no adversities in life okay and therefore uh, you would find that these three becomes more and more uh, no uh, dominant source of withdrawal behavior you remember during the same uh, thing we were discussing about <coughs> somebody who has been in prison for long okay so one you are removed from your uh, no immediate environment that is one and two because also this has great degree of disrepute that has come to you that has come to your family okay and then you have no other choice but to remain withdrawn in your life okay there was a very interesting uh, study in psychology uh, basically done on uh, baby monkeys but it's extremely important uh, i would just uh, know share it with you very briefly very old study uh, in this study what happened uh, that a uh, wire mesh mother was kept in a cage uh, you have seen uh, this uh, wire meshes uh, know put around the new saplings planted on by the side of the roads no so that the animals don't eat those saplings similar type of wire mesh was put in the lab okay so say for example if i am the wire mesh so up to this level it's all wire mesh the face was that of a mother monkey okay situation 1 situation 2 uh, where you have the wire mesh but then you have uh, know the furry cover over it okay so some fur has been put over the wire mesh so it would be softer like this now a baby monkey was put in the cage and that and then suddenly there used to be a loud noise in the cage out of extreme fear the baby monkey would run to the wire mesh mother this is not a real mother not a not, not a natural mother it will run to the wire mesh mother and it will hold it okay it's you can imagine no uh, small babies in extreme fear holding their parents no so just hold the wire mesh mother and later on it was realized uh, that these baby monkeys when they became adults okay the behavior of monkeys who repeatedly hold it the wire mesh compared to uh the baby monkeys uh, which hold it wire mesh mother with the furry cover and compared them to the baby monkeys who had real mothers okay the temperament of these three group of monkeys okay were completely different in their adulthood okay we are not touching upon that issue but just to tell you that there is there are ex very good literature in psychology uh hardcore research based uh, no evidence that talks about something called sensory deprivation okay and sensory deprivation basically means that if you are not exposed to certain type of stimuli and therefore certain uh, no functions of your uh, physiological system has not been activated then for the remaining part of your life you do not use them because it is unethical to conduct such studies on human beings so all these studies have dominantly been conducted on uh, animals uh, interesting examples would be like say a tadpole okay whose one eye was folded okay so you uh, green cap was put over one of the eyes of the tadpole so the tadpole would move in the water tank 
okay. and if it has to say look at the right side it would turn the neck and then look at the right side because the right eye was blinded. After some time this cap was removed and then it was realized that although biologically the eye was perfectly okay, the tadpole used to know turn the neck to see the right side of its body. Okay. These are severe consequences of sensory deprivation. Uh, there are good amount of literature in uh, psychology pertaining to our uh, Indian context which has to do with the effect of deprivation on the psychological growth of human babies no? and these are basically you know both types of deprivation. Families which have undergone great degree of malnutrition and family who have been socially discriminated. Okay. And in social psychology we will find good amount of uh, you know empirical evidence on this even with respect to our own country we have such type of empirical evidence that simply you experience social isolation for long your entire approach towards life changes. Okay. So, these three things can you know really make uh, you withdrawn like anything. Now, uh, seclusive adjustment might develop as the most satisfactory behavior pattern that a weak handicapped or socially unsophisticated person can achieve. Okay. So, the best part that you can do is that you seclude yourself and your seclusion makes you realize that you are adjusted. You are, if I do not go out, if I do not mix up with people, if I do not interact with them, so fine I have safeguarded myself. I have not uh, no experienced the heat of uh, no being uh, no, uh, an odd man out in the group and therefore, I have succeeded adjustment. But if you start repeating it, it is a withdrawal symptom. Now, another way of looking at it, now we are turning the side no, of the table. Now, you look at it from somebody uh, who really uses uh, withdrawal tendency as a system of adjustment, as a mechanism to adjust. Now, as long as people find that their adjustment is satisfactory, even though you might consider that I am not adjusted, but if I consider that I am by and large adjusted and I do not feel inferior because I am capable of doing something or because I am not capable of doing something. Okay. And the important clause is that I do not become socially withdrawn. So, I participate in all types of social engagements. Okay. I do not deprive myself of the opportunity of self expression and development. If I am able to manage this, then moderate degree of social withdrawal is ok. okay. So, you are not going to extreme withdrawal, extreme withdrawal would be an indicator of a psychotic syn uh, syndrome, but what you are doing is that you are adopting moderate degree of withdrawal mechanism. All you are doing is that although you are using moderate degree of withdrawal, you yourself is convinced okay, that my degree of adjustment is ok. One, two, I do not have a sense of inferiority, two, with riders. The riders are that I do not withdraw from uh, social scenarios okay, and I do not deprive myself of the opportunity of self expression and development. If these two things are managed okay, with these two riders, then moderate degree of withdrawal uh, practices are perfectly ok. It is not going to hamper your uh, no productivity, hamper uh, your psychological state. But if you remove the riders, then it becomes a cause of concern, because if you remove the rider, this means that in most of the social situation, when large number of people of the society will interact, you will no, tend to remain absent from that situation. One, two, whenever you know, there is a need for you to express yourself, you refrain from doing so. Okay. And there are opportunities that you could have exploited to evolve as a better individual to develop, but you did not do that. Okay. So, if you go for withdrawal tendencies like this, then it could lead to certain type of psychological disorders. Uh, I am sure you must be uh, remembering there were uh, several cases like that. The recent case that we had in uh, Delhi when 
uh, two sisters were recovered from their houses for months and months together they had not come out, come out of their house they were close to starvation they were uh, no very close to death you remember this case okay now if you start you know uh, withdrawing like this this means for months all together you do not come out of the house people in your neighborhood in your society have never seen your door open okay now this is basically completely rejecting the all opportunities of social interaction you are socially withdrawn you deprive yourself of the opportunity of self expression the opportunity of growth okay so you have compromised with both the riders you are not uh, you know uh, satisfying them okay so even though you consider that i am adjusted you are not okay and your withdrawal finally leads to this type of a consequence there was uh, you no know, some time back there was a news you know that a uh, uh, popular uh, actress of yester years of bollywood you no know, she died in her uh, apartment and two days after her death if i remember correctly okay uh, the neighbors reported that uh, there, are, there is some foul smell coming out of the house when the police had uh, broken the doors to realize that this yester years celebrity is lying dead on the on her bed again the neighbor said that no last time when we saw her was these many months ago okay you irrespective of whatever type of uh, life experience you had the moment you remove these two riders however convinced you are that i am adjusted you start moving towards the neurotic psychotic end of the problem okay it's no more a normal adjustment you move towards psychological disorders in many cases certain degree of social isolation might be an intelligent compromise okay so intellectually there could be a situation that you realize that fine i would maintain certain degree of isolation why because i need to you know prove that i am not what you think of or i am just like you the fact that i remain completely insulated from my surrounding okay could be uh, no good enough an intellectual exercise from my side because it's a well thought action okay that i am compromising with the situation you want me not to go out of the house not to talk to my boyfriend or girlfriend fine i won't go out of the house okay so here you are following certain degree of isolation but this isolation is a well thought isolation okay and this is an intelligent compromise and therefore you are not paying a psychological price for it you are not going towards aberrated forms of behavior the most severe defense withdrawal behavior pattern are emotionally induced and it is severe in terms of it serves basically the anxiety reduction function so basically defense withdrawal patterns okay uh, which will have intense emotion involved with it and the basic function that these uh, withdrawal tendencies these avoidance tendencies these intelligent compromises are supposed to perform is that it should finally succeed helping you reduce the anxiety that you are experiencing in that type of a situation if you are able to attain that okay you have uh, basically adopted avoidance withdrawal and compromise as a technique of satisfying your needs and therefore you have uh, no try to retain the level of adjustment that you were enjoying besides this there could be some <coughs> major experiences of life okay that can force you later on in your life to remain withdrawn or to avoid certain types of things mostly it has to do with how uh, you as a child experience interaction with your parents and your immediate uh, environment first abusive discipline in all families children are supposed to you know later on be disciplined and usually it is one of the parents who becomes 
the leader in terms of disciplining the child and it is usually the social convention is that one child will become uh, sorry one of the parent will become uh, no, uh, stringent the other parent will become permissible. Okay. Usually the father becomes stringent so all commands coming from the father okay, and the mother will you now play that soft role. So that in case of dissatisfaction grudges and all those you go to your mother you release your uh, feelings. Okay. But then father will keep on keep on drawing lines that you have to you know work within these boundaries and this is how you learn how to get disciplined. But if there are abusive discipline patterns in the family, okay, if the parents start you know, using abusive language for you simply because they want to discipline you or immediately you are being you know, physically punished, generous uses of slaps, okay. it could be within your family it could be when the visitors are there or when you yourself is a visitor to some other place and parents takes liberty of now exercising whether they have free, uh, free movement of the wrist or not. Okay. Such type of abusive discipline can make you uh, know very very withdrawn uh, in nature know, because you would always hesitate because of your early childhood experience whether I should really interact and how intense. Uh, no, the outcome of my reaction in this situation would be or how bad the result of the my involvement in this situation could be. Uh, similarly, even for uh, no, school days experiences also, no. if you experience uh, no, schools where no, you are allowed to share your feelings, where physical punishments are not allowed, okay, not at all administered, you develop as a different individual compared to schools where no, uh, for any minor of the mistake the minimum quantum of punishment is three sticks. I am told by a friend of mine who works in a school that he works in a prestigious school run by one of the corporates here in India and uh, he told me that in his school there is a place which, which is unofficially called by teachers as caning place. Why? Because uh, the maximum visibility from all the classrooms is from that spot. So, if a student has to be punished, <coughs> the student will be brought to that spot and then the teacher will punish. So, that most of the school uh, students in sitting in other classes they can see you being punished. Now, this is extreme degree of abusive punishment. No? Say if I scold you in isolation, this is a tolerable experience compared to when you are uh, know, scolded in a smaller group. But if you scold me, you know, you uh, call everybody in the outreach auditorium, ask me to come to the stage and then scold me, it is extreme degree of abuse. So, abusive discipline, if you one has experienced in life, there is a greater likelihood that that individual will use compromise, withdrawal and avoidance very generously compared to others verbal mistreatment you have not been physically abused but you have continuously experienced all types of uh, slangs for yourself okay people were harsh in terms of uh, bad words people were harsh in terms of uh, you know cutting your sentences in between and then uh, bulldozing you verbally if you have experienced even verbal mistreatment usage of avoidance compromise withdrawal will maximize in your life. If the physical punishment continues for little longer, so it started when you were uh, say 6 months old, when you urinated on in the bed and the father slapped you, Dad, this is not the right place. Okay. Two, when you do something wrong in the class and the teacher you know, slaps you. Two, when you say in the hostel that fine uh, I do not uh, feel hungry and therefore, I cannot eat all that has been given to me in the plate and the hostel warden tells you stand up. Okay. Uh, you are born at a better time no, uh, in this country when at least legally there is a ban that you cannot use physical punishment although it is being used in many many places. Uh, but, uh, our generation 
had bad time because this was considered to be a mechanism to discipline children and our previous generations had even worse time okay because the parents will take pride in saying oh if teacher has slapped you great you are worshiped no you are blessed you will become good okay all types of weird types of things no so over generations gradually things have improved by i think by the time your children come to school or when their children come to school by and large these physical punishments perhaps india will get rid of it but think of another interesting mechanisms when you are not physically punished when you are not receiving continuous physical punishment when you are not receiving verbal mistreatment but the parents they withhold their affection or they withdraw their affection okay long back uh, that was the first year of schooling of my son he did something in the school which is not pleasant okay he was involved in a fight with one of his classmates and um, at the end of the school hour when i went to collect him okay the teacher told me that this is what has happened and uh, i came back home i told it to my wife and then we decided uh, that uh, what we will do is that we'll uh, confiscate all his toys and lock it and we told him that see this is what you have done in the school today the teacher has complained to us and uh, it's very bad it's not uh, something that uh, one should do and therefore you don't deserve playing with toys so all his toys okay we had put it in a trunk and we locked it we did provide him food water milk everything but all we ensured was that we had minimal conversation with him and believe me within 1 hour 1 and 1/2 hour it was extremely i could see how painful it was for him okay uh, three four year old child uh, when he pleaded sorry for his act and he promised that he will never uh, you know get engaged in such type of activities and the moment he did so immediately we opened the trunk all the toys were available to him we were as friendly as we were but imagine that one and half hour of discomfort you no know, psychological discomfort <coughs> and since then he has never been involved in such type of activities okay now when you withhold your affection it could be very very painful imagine uh, i don't know if you had seen this uh, show by amir khan no satyamev jayate when there was an episode on love marriages and uh, two couples had come they are uh, no adult couples newly married crying that uh, since one and a half year has passed since our marriage and our parents have just deserted us okay we want uh, to say sorry to them through your channel and please accept us okay now this is also Uh, no completely no withdrawing affection you are my child okay i love you like anything but the day you go ahead with your marriage of your own choice my affection is withdrawn we are strangers okay now if you have this type of withdrawal experiences withholding experiences of affection in future you might always calculate whether this act will break down the relationship between us between any two of us or not and therefore again withdrawal tendencies avoidance compromise can very generously be used inconsistency in treatment i as a child do the same thing but in one case you don't scold me the other case you scold me third case you slap me fourth case you deprive me of food fifth case you ask me to stand out of the house okay act or remains the same say for example the child asks you that fine can you give me 5 rupees today i want to go to the canteen and i say nahi nahi uh, you take your lunch box and we'll take you to some other decent place of eating because we don't know what type of food is uh, being provided in your canteen situation 1 situation 2 can i have a, can i have 5 rupees i want to take it to my canteen every day you ask for money i don't know what you are asking for you are always interested in money you are not interested in school the child thinks are last time i asked he was you no know, explaining it to me why i shouldn't get 5 rupees today he scolds me situation 3 papa can i get 5 5 fuck 
okay. and then some time later again you ask go out go out okay. you make the child stand out of the house lock the door inside now ask for 5 rupees there. Okay. Every time you are interested in 5 rupees and poor child will never understand that what happened no because same situation okay, and all 4 different types of responses. The worst would be when the father says 5 rupees 5 rupees and you say nay 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 I won't I do not need it. Okay. You go out and then you find your mother standing there and tells you beta yellow 5 rupees do not tell it to your father it happens in the families. Now, imagine the plight of a child you know, who will not understand what was wrong is carrying 5 rupee wrong is demanding for 5 rupees wrong is asking father for money is wrong okay, is hiding something from father is wrong great, con great confusion. No? Now, if you have inconsistencies like this in the nurturance of the child you remember we had talked about the super ego which basically gives you the moral principles no guiding principles. Now, if you receive inconsistency in your treatment in the childhood days you will have great difficulty drawing lines because most of the lines would be blurred for you. Okay. Because once your father had drawn it here mother had drawn it here okay, somebody had drawn it here the same parents draw drew, uh, drew the line sometime here you do not know where the line exists. <coughs> And because you do not know uh, this uh, where to draw the lines therefore, every time there would be a mismatch between what the expectation is and what you come forward with. In order to uh, know remove this discomfort you might start using avoidance withdrawal or compromise in the later situations. Okay. What is more important is that if the punishment is predictable you can tolerate it. If you know that father invariably slaps. So, then you say something and then you say yes you wait for the slap no? it is a tolerable part of the experience, but then if it is random okay, you were playing and suddenly it comes and slaps you. Okay, it invokes greater degree of sense of punishment and therefore, great degree of anxiety in you. Okay. Uh, we have uh, no, just one last slide to discuss. So, Friday we will discuss only the abnormal part of uh, withdrawal tendency and avoidance and rest of the Friday's day uh, Friday will, will be used for discussion pertaining to this very topic.